In Creo Parametric, you can generate a bill of materials from an assembly. You do not have to be in a drawing to do that. To create the bill of materials, go to the Tools menu, and on the left side of the ribbon, you have the Bill of Materials command. When you click on it, you're going to get a dialog box that opens up in the upper right hand corner. And in here, you can choose whether you want to generate the bill of materials for the top level of the assembly, for a subassembly. And if you choose subassembly, you can use the pick icon to select which one, and also for a part. And if you select part, just like with subassembly, you can choose which part you want to generate the bill of materials for. And you might be thinking, hey, wait, why would I generate a bill of materials for a part? In Creo Parametric 7.0, multi-body modeling functionality was introduced. And in a part model, you can designate different bodies in order to have them appear in the bill of materials. But let's go back to the top level assembly. You can see that we have a number of other different options in here. For example, you can include skeletons. Here we have the option for unplaced objects. In other words, things that are included, but they don't have constraints that define their location in the model. Here we have those designated objects. For example, those different bodies in a part. Here we have something for inactive design solutions. I'll be honest, I don't know what that means. And here we have the option for embedded components. In Creo Parametric 8.0, you can embed components within an assembly so that they don't exist as their own separate part file. And I can check that one as well. So now I can click on the OK button and it's going to do some processing. And here we have the bomb generated inside of the embedded browser. And you can see here we have the assembly at the top level and it lists all the different components. We have both subassemblies and parts. Let me scroll down some more. Then we get to our different subassemblies and now we have all the different components that exist in that particular subassembly. And then it'll go through all the other different subassemblies. If I scroll all the way down to the bottom, then we're going to have a table that is going to list all the different components at this top level with their quantity. So it's sort of giving you the multi-level components list that you would get in Windchill. Let me scroll back up to the top to show you a few of the other different controls. I'm going to use this icon down at the bottom to collapse the navigator. I'm also going to make this a bunch narrower just so that I can see my assembly and the bill of materials at the same time. So we've got all the different components in here. You'll notice that there is a hyperlink. And if I hover my mouse over a hyperlink, it tells me that clicking on it will highlight the object in the graphics area. I'm not sure exactly where that one is. Let's try the inner structure subassembly. There you can see what it is highlighting. Here we have the cameras. By the way, there is an icon underneath the actions list that will do the same thing. It'll highlight the object in the graphics area. Let me use Control R to repaint the screen so nothing is highlighted anymore. There are a couple other different icons. For example, here we have the icon to get the model information on an object, which is just like the model information icon that you have in the ribbon of the Tools tab. And then there's an open icon that will allow you to open up that particular object in its own separate window. You have this being generated in the embedded browser. Be aware that you have a print icon. You also have a save icon to save this as an HTML file. There is a config.pro option, info output mode. If you have that set to file or screen end file, it'll generate a text file with the information that you have in here. Also be aware that you can use various config.pro options and a file format in order to control what information is being displayed in here. But again, that's just a little bit of customization. Me personally, if I want to generate a bill of materials with different information, I'm probably going to use pro report mode instead. But 
this gives you an indication of the components in the assembly. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.